Welcome back. This is tutorial four, modeling a Pantera in Blender. And in our last tutorial, we basically modeled the fender flare. And uh, now we're going to get on to modeling the rest of the front fender. This is where it really gets fast paced and kind of fun because you can actually see the car coming together piece by piece. I want to draw your attention here to just a few things. As you can see, we're having a little problem up here and over here in our blueprints. These are not exactly meeting up. Well, I can tell you from experience of modeling this car from start to finish that the problem is in this blueprint right here. There are several things that are off. As I said before, this blueprint was made for some model that was uh, injection molded and thrown in a box for some teenage kid to put together. Nobody ever figured probably that these would be used in some manner of a working drawing to create another model. Um, these, I'll, I'll tell you right now, from the perspective of somebody who's done a lot of modeling, this is not a problem. When we get to the advanced stages of uh, the modeling process, we're going to be modeling a great deal from pictures of the car. What this is is just really a rough, rough end stage. Now that's not to say that you should not try to align your blueprints as perfectly as possible, but in the world of human error, a modeler can only do so much. Sometimes you have to work with incomplete blueprints or even mixed up blueprints you know, that, that came from two different efforts. I, I found that to be the case a lot of times and they're greatly off. So uh, when in doubt, go to real life, go to a picture of the car. I, I have many pictures of this car, many different models. Basically they all run along the same lines and are basically the same. And uh, so what we're going to do here to get started is go into edit mode and uh, I really don't need any other view right now so I'm going to make this my big view. Okay, now I'm going to basically just go along here and select all the outside points here. Oops, I was already selected. Bear with me. Okay. Whoops. No, I did not want to do that. Notice I leave all my mistakes in here. Goof ups. That's good because, you know, you can actually see that uh, it's not the end of the world. Okay. I'm going to extrude these up. Extrude, come up here, only edges, and I'm just going to pop them up a little bit there. Actually, I better bring them up just a little bit more so I can see them. Okay, now what we want to do at this point is grab one of these and bring it up here. I'm going to bring it up mm, about as far as I can. I'm only going to go to the inside here. Or actually, because uh, this area up front here is actually where the nose shoots out. So I'm going to go to the edge right here. And uh, actually, I better bring that back a little bit. So we can be a little cleaner transition there. This one needs to come down just a hair. There's going to be a lot of adjusting on this model as there is on every model. Okay. Mm -hmm. Follow the curve here. It's easy to get really turned around on these things. There's so many lines and not all of them have a whole lot of meaning in the real world. Okay. So once we get that rough down a little bit, there we go. Now we're off to a running start. Okay. Good enough. So we're 
just lining these up with the outside of. Oh, come on. Okay. We're lining these up with the outside of the fender. I'm just hitting the GY, GZ. Not concerned about the X at this point. Okay. And up here, I'm going to start bringing these down a little bit. Because on this car, the fender flare goes just about up to the top of the hood, as we'll see when we check out a photograph of this wonderful beast later on. Okay. So just place these all around here. I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. Modeling is very tedious, but it's also very fulfilling. Years ago, this stuff was still pretty much science fiction. Okay. This point here is not actually exact in the real world, but I'm just putting it up there for the time being until I need to adjust it later on. For lack of a better place to put it, it's just going up there. It's actually going to be moved around. And that, my friends, is the advantage of having worked on this before. Actually, several times. I usually build all of my models a couple of times just to get really good at it. Okay, let's see. Okay. There we go. And I'm just gonna oops. Okay. All right. Now, this is just a rough end of the fender. Uh, so I'm going to now go back to my top view, and we're going to zoom in here on the front part. Hit tab again to bring it back up. Now, go into edit mode. Now we're going to select a point here, just right there. So I'm going to marginalize this. As you can see down here, it's starting to look really cool. Alright, now GX. And we'll bring it right in there and place it right near the hood. Okay. Just keep doing this, fine tuning it when necessary. Okay. On the Pantera, you can't really see it in the drawing, but there's just a little bit of space between the, the pop up headlight and where the hood meets the fender. It's really a little too close here, but like I said, we will deal with that later on. Oops. Now, not bad, pretty close. Okay, get this point here on the lateral line, bring it in so it's going to be right there. And this one is going to come in a little bit, and I just put there. GX. Okay. 
this one and pull it in. Skip one. Edge, let's see. Fine adjustment. See that one? We nope. We need to do that one. Okay, it's about right. Grab the next one up here. Thunder's really good about micro selecting this stuff, even when they're very close together. Uh, some programs, Cinema, which I've worked with before in the past, is really you know it'll it'll select both points when you get you know near one two that are very close together. It's very frustrating. Cinema has its advantages. Very very powerful. About as powerful as Blender. Has some some interesting uh, features on it that are unique. But Blender is free. Which is a big plus, and cinema costs way over a thousand dollars this day and age at this point in time. Uh, so if you work with Blender, you don't have to worry about any jackbooted thugs from the software industry beating down your door. If that could really happen, so GX. Another really good program, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with or have heard of, is 3D Max. 3D Max is really good for this modeling. Modeling cars, especially. A lot of great cars are made in 3D Max. Let's see. Let's start pulling these out. Let's see. Okay, now I want you to get rid of that. I want you to direct your attention to the perspective window, and we're starting to see our front fender come together. Oh, here, hold on. Okay. Okay, I just sh shut the recorder down for a little bit and uh, went and tweaked and adjusted our front fender here so you can kind of see it in a little better now. It's really starting to take shape and you can see the curves in the other views up here starting to sheathe our car with its armor. So it's beginning to become a reality. This is when it really becomes exciting and a bit tedious but very rewarding. Uh, if you do this over and over again, you get very, very fast at it. It doesn't take nearly as long as it will in these tutorials. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much for enjoying my tutorial, and I'll see you in the next installment, Tutorial 5. Bye.